Contrary to popular belief, carrying a gun is not supposed to be painful. And you are supposed to have a full range of motion. Pain isn't normal, and it's not something you have to just tough out or learn how to live with. There's actually a system and a process for getting comfortable with your concealed carry gun and holster. By the end of this video, you are going to understand the five foundation principles of concealed carry comfort and how to identify and troubleshoot any problems you might be having. Nothing we talk about today is specific to any holster or company. And that's because comfort is a skill. It's not a thing that you can buy, and believe me, I've tried. Now, the bad news is all bodies are shaped differently, so there's no one magic solution for comfortable concealed carry. What works for someone else might not work for you. But the good news is that you can learn the basic comfort principles and learn how to apply them to your holster and your body. I think it's important to be honest and upfront about our expectations because we all know that carrying a gun is never gonna be as comfortable as not carrying a gun. We're strapping a heavy piece of metal and plastic to our body and that's not without a cost. However, there's a difference between discomfort and pain. Discomfort is something that's annoying or uneasy, but the main difference is that it goes away if you're not focusing on it. Kind of like wearing a bra or breaking in new boots, eventually your brain tunes it out when you have other things to think about. Pain is your body warning you of actual or potential tissue damage, and that's a big deal. Pain doesn't go away when you're not focusing on it. It either stays the same or it gets worse. Don't ignore pain or just try to tough it out because you could actually do real permanent damage to your body. Now, both discomfort and pain have a physical and a psychological component, which means they are personal and subjective. Everyone has a different level of tolerance and that matters because you can't just talk somebody into ignoring their experience. Telling people to man up or just get over it doesn't really work and it makes people give up on carrying. Either they quit completely or they switch to a carry method that is comfortable, but it sucks by all other objective criteria. Additionally, here's a little piece of insight I picked up from my friend Annette Evans over at On Her Own. Sometimes people feel uncomfortable, but the source of the discomfort isn't actually physical. They might not be fully confident in their knowledge or their skills or their gear, and that tends to magnify any comfort issues and make them feel much more severe. So if you're new to concealed carry, or if you're changing to a new carry position, it's worth investing some time into some good quality training with a good instructor. Troubleshooting comfort problems is a whole lot easier when you're feeling capable and informed just as a baseline. Anytime you buy a mass produced product that has to fit your body, you should expect to have to adjust it and customize it at least to some extent. Think of it like fitting a prosthetic. You've got a mechanical device that you're carrying in really intimate contact with your body for long periods of time. The gun is similar. It's a heavy chunk of metal and plastic with flat sides and hard corners, and your body is organic and curved. So the interface between those things needs to be customized to fit the unique human shapes underneath it. Just like a prosthetic transforms a mechanical object into an extension of the human body. On top of that, comfort isn't the only thing that matters. The holster also needs to do all the other things that a holster needs to do, like be safe, be secure, be accessible, and make the gun conceal well and tuck into your body. It can't just be comfortable with no other criteria. As you start to experiment with these techniques, you'll notice that you can't go too far towards any one extreme without making sacrifices in other areas. Like sure, you could surround your gun with padding until you can't feel the hard edges at all, and it's comfortable, but you'll pay for that. So you can see how getting comfortable concealment is gonna involve learning as much as you can, determining what's most important to you, and then finding the best compromise between all of the competing factors. Speaking generally, when you're trying to find the most comfortable carry position, you wanna keep the gun in a spot with enough surface area to support it, away from your joints, and in a place where you have full range of motion. 
We call that finding your concealment boundaries. And that means finding the correct ride height and centering for your unique body shape. If your gun's out of bounds, it'll cause problems. It's pretty easy to find your boundaries for carrying strong side, but appendix carry, which is on the front of the body, takes a little bit more work because small differences matter more. All carry positions have pros and cons, and there's a lot more at stake than just comfort, so it is a lot to think about. But the good news is that the foundation principles of comfort apply to all carry positions and all body types. Some of the techniques are going to require adaptation, so take this information and use your common sense to apply it to your body and your chosen carry position. To determine my comfort boundaries, I use my unloaded gun in the holster and move the whole thing around. Since your legs move up when you sit or bend, start in the seated position to find your boundaries. Notice how the further out towards my hip joint I go, the higher the gun needs to be to avoid interference. By simply testing out different movements and paying attention to where my body hinges, I can figure out where the boundaries are for my individual shape and anatomy. You can see that if the gun is too low, it hits your legs or other relevant anatomy, so moving it up is the obvious fix. If you feel like your gun is too high and it's catching you underneath your ribs, there's actually a technique tip for that. Tighten your abs as you bend, allowing the gun to float ahead of the ribs instead of hanging up underneath. If your gun hangs up under your soft tissue, also known as the tactical muffin top, then usually the answer is to move it higher. Then you can add a wedge to help with concealment and fill in any gap between the gun and the body. We've got a whole video series on concealment wedges and it's awesome, so definitely be sure to check that out. It's got everything there from learning what shape and size wedge you need to how to make your own. Two things to keep in mind. One, you only have a finite space inside your concealment boundary. The size of your boundary matters and the size of the gun matters, it's relative. So if you're a tiny person carrying a huge gun, you're a lot more likely to run into range of motion issues and comfort problems. Check out the Concealment Percentages video by Armed and Styled. It's got some great information on figuring out what gun size will be easy for you to conceal versus what gun size will be a little bit harder and make you have to work a little more. And the second thing is that your ideal ride height may or may not correspond with the belt line of your pants. So you might need to consider changing to higher or lower rise pants or using a carry system that doesn't attach to your clothing. That's something you'll have to figure out for yourself, but I will say the most common error people make is carrying too low. Plan on taking some time to experiment with your own concealment boundaries and make sure to watch the concealment mechanics videos so you can see examples of how to find your sweet spot on a whole bunch of different body types. Whenever you're having discomfort, you always wanna treat the root cause first and then address any remaining issues. That way you're not making unnecessary compromises and sacrificing things you don't need to sacrifice. The general rule is to focus on ergonomics first before adding padding or softness. Ergonomic means that it interfaces correctly with your body. Softness is just the window dressing on top. Pressure points are areas of concentrated pressure, and they're probably the most common source of pain or discomfort. The potential for harm depends on the amount of force applied, the time it's applied, and the surface area and shape of the object applying force. Pressure points can cause pain, bruising, skin damage, and even pressure ulcers over time. For concealed carry inside the waistband, one of the most common pressure points people encounter is the muzzle of the gun digging into their pelvis and creating a painful hot spot. This is especially likely if you're carrying with a smaller gun with less mass below the belt. See the keel principle video. Another source is putting a flat gun on a sharply curved body part where the gun only has a small amount of surface area to contact. You can also get pressure points from areas on the holster that end abruptly or that don't interface well with your body. So for example, the gun touching your thigh when you're seated isn't normally a big deal if the muzzle is rounded, but if the weight of the gun is resting on a narrow band of material, that smaller surface can create a pressure point that becomes painful over time. 
Choosing something with a rounded muzzle can help, but you can also just move the gun higher as we discussed in the carry position section. The neat thing about pressure points is that eliminating them usually means making the gun lay flat against the body, which not only makes it more comfortable, it also happens to give us better concealment. So you can kill two birds with one stone by getting the gun into your sweet spot and adjusting it to lie flat. If you watched our basic concealment mechanics series, you already know how to do that. If not, well, quick heads up. One of the most common pressure point mistakes I see is when people use stiff belts for inside the waistband carry. If your belt is too stiff, it will bridge instead of conforming to your body. Check out our video about that. Another thing to consider is that your body moves. So you may not have a problem when you're standing, but you may run into issues when the holster encounters your body when you bend or when you sit for long periods of time. If that's the case, go back to the concealment boundaries step and see if you can find a better spot on your body that's further away from your joints. The last thing you can do is add pads to bridge or soften the pressure points. That works, but you may lose some concealment since the pad tends to act like a snowshoe and resist the concealment mechanics. General best practice is to resolve any concealment mechanics or sweet spot issues first and then add the minimum amount of padding necessary, just enough to get the job done. Here's a quick tip. Adhesive Velcro loop actually works really well for this because it gives you an ultra thin but cushy layer of padding. Friction is the next most common source of concealed carry comfort problems. For the purposes of this discussion, we're gonna define friction as excessive movement of the gun relative to the surface of the skin. So the gun is rubbing or sliding. To solve friction issues at the root, first try to minimize the movement of the gun. You can do that by repositioning the gun in a lower movement area of the body. If you're carrying low and your gun gets nudged up every time you move your leg, try carrying a little higher so there's less interference. You can also secure the gun better with a more stable belt or holster system. If you can't get the gun to be perfectly still, then the next step is to add an undergarment or a liner to protect your skin. That can be as simple as an undershirt or high-waisted underwear, or it could be a liner applied to the holster itself, such as moleskin. Skin shear is the movement of the top layers of the skin relative to the bottom layers of the skin. So imagine going down a metal slide in shorts. As the skin is pulled, it strains and damages the underlying layers and the connections in between. Skin shear can be caused by just the holster itself, where it encounters your skin and sticks, but it's especially likely if you're using a holster with silicone or a sticky material. If you do a lot of running, be especially watchful of this because repetitive bouncing can add up to a skin shear injury over time. Like friction, the first key to solving skin shear is to minimize the movement of the gun. So get it on a lower movement area of your body if you can, keep it away from your joints, and make sure it's as secure and stable as possible. You might want to experiment with stretchy versus non-stretchy belts and carry systems to see which works best for your body, because that can actually vary depending on how much soft tissue jiggle you get when moving. You can also add a low friction undergarment or liner, such as compression shorts or a rash guard. Another thing that can work if you're having problems with skin shear is using a lubricant like Body Glide that helps the gun slide over the skin rather than sticking to it. The last thing that can help is reducing the weight of the gun, which helps to reduce the amount of force that's transferred by bouncing and other movements. Placing a solid object against the body prevents heat loss and moisture evaporation. When your skin is chronically damp and hot, it actually weakens, which makes all of the above injuries more likely to happen and more severe if they do happen. It can also contribute to infection and irritation. Skin microclimate refers to the conditions at your skin's surface. While we can't completely eliminate the inherent issues involved in carrying a gun against your body all day, there are a few things we can do to manage those conditions as best we can. Hygiene and moisture management are really important. Use washable holster and wedge materials and make sure to clean them regularly. If you're using pads or wedges, grab a couple of extras so you can switch them out periodically when they get wet. You can also use breathable or wicking liners and undergarments. 
Materials with natural or synthetic antimicrobial properties can also help, something like sheepskin or antimicrobial fabrics. If you're having problems with your skin health, you might want to consider minimizing the amount of time you spend carrying when it's feasible to do that. So this is going to depend on your lifestyle and your risk assessment, and it requires weighing the pros and cons of each choice. So for example, you might decide to use a pocket holster around the house instead of carrying inside your waistband. The last thing we're going to cover is imbalance. That's when you have too much weight or leverage in one area of the body. Imagine carrying a heavy gun on your ankle and running a marathon. That's imbalance. Imbalance can cause pain immediately or over time. It can cause posture or gait changes, and it can actually make you lose mobility or worsen any chronic issues you might be having. One way to solve imbalance is to move the gun closer to the center of the body, if possible. You can also reduce the weight of the gun and minimize the amount of time you spent carrying it. It's a good idea to ask a professional about exercise or physical therapy, especially if you think imbalance may cause problems for you down the line. Prevention is going to be the best solution, and you can stop these issues before they even occur. Contrary to popular belief, carrying a gun, carrying a gun is not supposed to be painful, and you are supposed to